Hi everybody. Thanks for joining me in this video that looks at linear actuators and force control with a focus on robotic end effectors. We'll start with a review of different types of linear actuators showing their internal design and relative strengths and weaknesses. The focus will be on servo-controlled actuators, either DC brush or brushless DC, although step motors are sometimes also used in linear actuators. Then we'll focus on popular techniques for force control using these same actuators. We'll discuss how torque can be precisely controlled both with and without an explicit force sensor such as a strain gauge. Finally, we'll look under the hood at the control algorithms used to achieve these various kinds of force control. So stay tuned as we give you the key information you need in your next motion design that uses linear actuators and force control. Motors and other types of electric actuators come in many shapes and sizes, but compared to actuators that transport an object from point A to point B and focus on position control, robotic end effectors commonly also require force sensing to ensure that objects being carried aren't crushed or dropped. Interestingly, the force sensing function may not require a separate physical hardware device, such as a strain gauge. It may instead be achieved by electronics that measure current flow through the actuator coils, thereby allowing a sensed torque to be inferred. Any discussion of end effectors starts with the discussion of linear servo actuators. There are a few varieties, but ironically the most common configuration actually uses a rotary motor to create linear motion. The rotary motor is most often a DC brush or brushless DC type although step motors can be used as well. As the motor rotates, a mechanism such as a lead screw converts the rotation into linear movement. Rotary to linear actuators come in a vast variety of sizes, strokes, and force output. These actuators are characterized by a high force output, moderate speed output, and moderate positioning accuracy. The range of applications that this type of actuator is used in is vast and includes electronics manufacturing machinery, semiconductor equipment, biotech and laboratory automation, textile, industrial automation, and more. A second category of linear servo actuators is direct drive brushless DC motors. Like a normal rotary brushless motor, these are commutated servo-controlled motors, which typically use an encoder for position control. Direct drive here means linear motion is directly generated by the motor coils and magnets. No gears, lead screws, or pulleys are needed. The linear version of the brushless DC motor is essentially an unwrapped rotary version of the same. They both have a stator, the part that houses the coils, and they both have a rotor, the part that contains the permanent magnets. As we shall see, using the term rotor is confusing for a linear motor since it doesn't rotate. Nevertheless, we will use this term because there seems to be no other accepted term for this part of the motor in a linear motor. Two different configurations of the stator and rotor are possible. One where the stator, which is the part with the coils, is stationary, and the rotor, which is the part with the magnets, moves. The second is the opposite, where the stator moves and the rotor is stationary. The choice of configuration comes down to cost and mechanical considerations, such as how the wiring connects to the coils and the length of the stroke. Products such as XY tables tend to use embedded coils in the base with the magnets in the moving part of the actuator. Longer stroke devices often reverse this with a relatively small stator assembly moving along a relatively long track with embedded magnets. Regardless of the configuration, direct drive actuators allow the actuator's output force to be controlled precisely without need of a force sensor. In direct drive motors, external forces can be felt directly by the servo system. We'll talk more about this later. There is one more direct drive arrangement to discuss, which is where a rod-shaped rotor is used as opposed to a track-shaped mechanism. The rod contains the magnets, and as before, either the rod can move with the stator, staying stationary, or the rod can be stationary with the stator traveling across it. Whichever arrangement is used, the linear brushless DC motor is the workhorse for applications that demand 
ultra high reliability and fast response time. Compared to rotary to linear actuators, direct drive motors have a very high acceleration and moderate torque output. Although direct drive motors are more expensive, they still find frequent use in industries such as laboratory automation, semiconductor equipment, and electronics manufacturing equipment. Another important category of direct drive linear actuators is the linear DC motor, which in turn has two sub flavors, a moving magnetic rod arrangement and a voice coil arrangement. The magnetic rod style DC linear actuator can deliver modest torques and speeds with a small to modest stroke distance. Its main advantage is simplicity and therefore low cost. Voice coil actuators reverse the role of the stator and the rod magnets. This actuator has a short stroke, modest torque output, and extremely fast response time. The speed is due to the fact that the moving portion can be very light, consisting of little more than the coils themselves held together by an adhesive such as an epoxy. The drawing in this slide shows a voice coil motor driving a rod, but many voice coils actuate, in quotes, air or light rather than a mechanical rod. A stereo speaker is in fact the namesake application of such an actuator, pushing a thin, flat membrane which results in sound waves being created. Applications for positioning linear DC motor or voice coil motors are varied and include precision optics, scientific instruments, valve controllers, and more. With this primer on linear actuators complete, let's talk about one of the key differences between motors used for transport and motors used as end effectors. This difference is the need for force control. Examples of applications where force control is critical include grippers, screw cap applicators, web tensioners, press fit machinery, packaging equipment, and more. A robotic gripper is a good model to understand how sensing and controlling force can be important for end effector applications. In a gripper, the object being carried may vary in size or orientation, resulting in a different mechanical engagement point. But once contact is made, the gripper should apply a consistent force on the object, large enough to hold it securely, but not so large as to damage it. Let's look at two techniques that allow force control without need of an explicit force sensor. The first can be called let position determine force. In this approach, the actuator is controlled by a servo PID loop, PID stands for proportional integral derivative, which continuously monitors the motor torque output command. At the start, the gripper is not in contact with the object to be gripped and begins a trajectory move to approach it. As the move proceeds, at some point, the gripper begins to make contact with the object. This results in the servo loop increasing the commanded torque as it attempts to follow the trajectory. When this torque equals the desired grip force, the trajectory is halted. The gripping move is now complete and the arm can move with the gripped object held in place. Note, however, that since the position of the actuator is fixed, the actual applied grip force may vary significantly due to compliance of the gripped object during the move or the impact of acceleration on the move. In the second approach, which can be called set explicit force limit, the gripper similarly approaches the object using a commanded trajectory move, but the servo loop does not monitor the force output or halt the trajectory when a threshold is reached. Instead, a current output limit is programmed into the servo loop so that even if the PID loop tries to follow the trajectory, the force it can apply is no greater than the desired grip force threshold. With this technique, the grip force applied can adjust dynamically during the arm move. This is because the PID loop, once reaching a saturated output command, will always apply that force commanded independent of actuator position. So if the object being gripped compliantly deforms or presents a different force on the actuator during acceleration, the actuator position will move forwards or backwards in such a way that it always applies the threshold grip force. What advanced algorithm magic is needed to detect force in a servo control loop? As it turns out, no magic at all. 
The common PID loop shown in this slide can implement both of these grip strategies as long as it has the ability to compare the output torque command with the threshold and support a programmable torque limit. Note that in the control algorithm shown here, there are actually two separate control loops, a position loop and a current loop. Note that the current loop is also called a torque loop. A separate current loop is critical because accurate force control here is predicted on the ability to output a precise current through the motor coils. As mentioned earlier, the key assumption for accurate force control without an explicit external force sensor is that there is only a small amount of friction between the drive actuator and the object being controlled. The direct drive motor excels at meeting this requirement because the motor and the object, from the perspective of forcing sense, are actually one and the same. But even geared motors can sense force if the gear ratio is modest and the gearbox has low friction. What about applications where this assumption is not true? For example, the lead screw rotary to linear actuator discussed earlier in this webinar. Force control using actuators such as this can still be achieved using a strain gauge. But to control force with this kind of actuator, a different kind of control loop called an outer loop controller is needed. How does it work? First, in the outer loop, a commanded force is combined with the measured force and run through a PID filter. This outer loop then sends a corrective signal to a downstream velocity loop, which in turn is used to drive the motor. The motor is commanded forward or backward as needed to precisely maintain the force. Such a cascaded force velocity loop is shown in the servo diagram above. While this control loop may be a little more complicated to implement than the standard PID loop, by integrating a measured force into the controller, we have opened the door to utilizing the large class of actuators that use gears in force control applications. In the cascaded force velocity diagram on the previous slide, there was a special filter located between the force loop output and the velocity loop input. This filter is called a deadband filter and is useful for reducing hunting when the needed corrective velocity command is close to zero. It effectively says, even if we aren't perfect, no need to keep trying. We're done. The result is quieter operation when not actively tracking changes in the force. So, for example, if the robot arm is not moving and just gripping the object, once the force control loop achieves the desired force, or close to it, the dead band filter sets the commanded motor velocity to zero, which means there is no further motion of the motor. That concludes our presentation, and I hope you enjoyed it. This presentation showed different types of linear actuators commonly used in motion control applications and how precision force control can be achieved with electric actuators both with and without external force control sensors. For those interested, we will present a few more slides on performance motion devices and its products. Performance motion devices, also called PMD, is a leader in motion control technology for life sciences, robotics, and industrial control. PMD's motto, motion control at its core, reflects our unique and powerful strategy of placing motion control ICs at the core of all of our products so that they speak one common motion language. PMD was founded in 1992 and is headquartered in Boston, Massachusetts. PMD is an ISO 9001 and ISO 1345 certified company and is the motion partner of choice for the world's leading machine OEMs. PMD makes a wide range of motion control products for integrated circuits to modules to boards. All of these products support brushless DC, DC brush, and step motors, and all of these products speak a single language, C-Motion. We have two overall groups of motion control ICs. The Juno ICs are dedicated to torque and velocity control and provide industry-leading performance in a very cost-effective package. Magellan motion control ICs provide positioning control. They come in single and multi-axis versions and have been used successfully in thousands of different applications. Atlas digital amplifiers are high-performance dedicated motor amplifiers. Like many of our products, Atlas amplifiers are ideal for creating embedded, PCB-mounted control solutions. 
ion digital drives contain a single axis Magellan IC and then add onboard amplification. These modules are perfect for applications where you want a ready to go plug and play solution. Ions come in both PCB mounted and cable connected versions. Finally, we have the Prodigy motion control boards, which again, start with a Magellan motion IC, but are packaged in a board format. Prodigy boards come in both PC-104 and standalone formats. Thanks again for watching this presentation. To go further, please contact your local PMD representation or visit us at www.pmdcorp.com. Thank you.